All right, here we are coming into mid-January, and I've been going back through the old shows. I can't believe this is our third year. The first show, Zero Zero, the intro was January, I think it was the very end of January of 2021. So that's 21, 22, 23. Here we are January 24. We're in our fourth year. I love it. And I went through a bunch of the shows. You know, we did the repeat with the beef stew, that type of thing. And I was like, did I ever do this before? Because, and I got to be careful. I made a, I made a promise. I'm not going to do this favorites things. It's one of my favorites. It's my favorite. I say that too much. Everything I do on here, I love. All right? So this dish, I don't know if I've done it before. But, oh boy, am I psyched to do it tonight. Come on over by the marble. Let's do it. Come on, let's do it. I'm making some chicken cutlets, yo. Here they are. I took two breasts. I cut them into these four pieces. Well, one breast, you know, the two sides. And I'm just going to smash them down a little. I don't want these too thin. But I want to thin them down a little. That looks pretty good. And now, I know I've done this before, fry station. We got our flour, seasoned, salt and pepper. Now, I'm a little embarrassed. You know, on this show, I'm like, make your own, don't buy stock, don't buy this. Well, Christmas time, I actually bought these panko breadcrumbs from Adams. But guess what? They're pretty good. Uh, and the main thing is no corn syrup. I'm sorry. Progresso, 4C, all these things I watched my grandma use. You can't find them without corn syrup now. These are made by Adams. Nice little blend. But of course, we always doctor them up. So I've got here some little pecorino romano. And some parmigiano reggiano. And I got some, put some fresh pepper. They have salt and pepper in there, but you know, it's in the store. You want that fresh crack. And I think that's it. I could add some fresh herbs, but these are actually pretty tasty. Mmm. Not bad at all. Now, flour, egg, breadcrumb, right? Fry station, but I didn't want to crack these eggs till you got a good look at them. Those are from today. I'm happy about it because the girls slow down in winter. I've only been getting about an egg a day, but today there were two in there. Must have been that warm, freakish warm weather. So I'm confident that come spring, production will pick up again. So let's get our eggs mixed up. Typical fry station, right? Seasoned flour, egg, bread. All right, so let me reposition this camera and we'll start frying these cutlets up. Now, while our fry pan's warming up though, uh, there's many ways these chicken cutlets get served. Some people like them over pasta, linguine with a little red sauce, beautiful. I'm gonna do I'm using what I have in the house. I have a little anchovy, some nice romaine I want to use up, and of course with this Parmigiano Reggiano, I've got a half a lemon cut here, some garlic, here's a radish which is a little off base, but I'm going to go with a little almost like faux Caesar on the side, slice our chicken cutlet over the Caesar, and then on the stove here, I have some green beans just steaming away. In fact, they're about done steaming. I'm going to turn that off. And then I'll just splash those in a pan with some garlic and olive oil. Maybe a little bit of butter. Okay? So let's get our fry station going. Come on. Let's do it. Come on. Let's do it. Alright, let's get some oil in the cast iron. 
just extra virgin olive oil because this is not a deep fry. We're not going hot, hot, hot. Might need more oil though. Pick up this California blend here. It's not exactly the Sicilia, but it's a decent oil. Okay, fry station, flour, egg, get another flour started, this is process right, keep it moving, egg, Panko, we doctored them up with a little cheese, right? And right into our oil. Let's go. That's the sound I like. A gentle sizzle. You want it too hot or you'll burn those breadcrumbs before you cook your chicken. Not hot enough. You get a wimpy start and no crust. So you gotta listen. Your ears are as much of the cooking process as your eyes, as your nose, as your tongue. It's all the senses. By listening, I know I can go up a little on my temp. These panko are actually not bad. They're pretty damn tasty. Go Adams. Always away from yourself, right? Don't pull towards. Because if you splash that oil at yourself, you're not going to be happy. And number four. Okay, while those are cooking, let's get a little garlic in here. These are my last two heads of 2023. I can't believe I'm going to have to go to the market and purchase garlic. That always makes me sad. However, the good news is 2024 garlic is under that snow. Got a nice head start on the season. Oh, there's nothing like this one, bro. All right. I'm going to pop it in here. We're going Caesar-ish. Salt. And let me get some ashugi in here. Or anchovy. Two of those. Is that two or three? Eh. The more the merrier. Garlic and anchovy. Just a couple of grains of salt. Got some color there. I'm going to put some more oil in the pan. 
You've heard me complain on another show. My oven is not level. And it's the procrastination of the century. I need to even this thing out. So the brown is not even. But I know how to fix it. All right. Let's get our Caesar thing going here. Lemon in there. Smells good already. Garlic, anchovy. Already put some salt. There's a little pepper and a little lemon juice. Okay, a little oleo. Make a Caesar style dressing. Give that a taste. Mm. Oh yeah. I'm gonna go in with a little pecorino romano into the dressing here to cream it up, help emulsify, but then Parmigiano Reggiano in the salad. How's that for contrast? This is all improv. All the See that? No brown out there. Watch this. It's all in the front here. See that? So I'm going to move this over here. Get this over here where the heat is. Even a mat. Look at these cutlets. I'm probably going to have one tonight. And that means I have some for a sandwich with mayo. And not to mention a few other applications. Oh, do I love those cutlets. Alright, this is fantastic. This is right where I want it. One more cracker pepper. Plenty of salt, because remember this, the anchovies are salty. That's why I didn't want to salt too much in the beginning. Alright, let's start plating this up. Alright, here's how I'm doing this. are actually doing good now. Look at that color. Just a matter of moving them around the pan. Find the right heat spots. So our chicken's good. Still on the stove. I'll turn the heat down a little. And now let's start plating this up. I've got my Romaine leaves, they're washed and dried. Let's do this. Oh, there we go. Little red radish, right? Which isn't traditionally Caesar, but we're not going for anything traditional. We're playing. We're having fun. Now, the Caesar dressing. With Pecorino Romano. You know what? I'm shutting all the heat. Because I was planning to saute these green beans in that pan, but I don't think they need it. And the reason I say that 
is this Caesar dressing is so delicious. I think it works on everything. So these are just straight up steamed green beans. And I've got a little more dressing here. Let's go right on those. This is the olive oil, anchovy, garlic, black pepper, just a touch of salt. Pecorino Romano. And let's go with a little crack on there. So the heat's off. Let's find one of these. Let's see. I think this guy. Because I'm only going for one. And that's a nice hefty piece of the breast there. So let's do it like this. A little chicken cutlet. Faux Caesar salad. Some green beans. I'm ready to give that a taste. It's green beans. Just simply steamed, right? Mmm. Beautiful. Oh, I knew I forgot something. Caesar salad. Here's the Parmigiano Reggiano. There we go. That's what it was missing. Yeah. That's a raw leaf out there. I want to get some of that Caesar style dressing on there with the anchovy, lemon juice, garlic. I got a red radish, which is a little out of the ordinary. Mm. Oh, yeah. And here we go. Chicken cutlet. I said I wasn't going to use words like favorite, but boy, do I love these. The cutlet, breaded cutlet. You can do it with chicken, you can do it with veal, you can do it with lamb. There's something called chicken fried steak. Mmm. Well, let me say something. I lost my taste for a couple of weeks after Christmas. I just saw my doctor. I did not have COVID. Some sort of wicked head cold. She hooked me up. A little bit of steroids. Just to get the inflammation down in the lungs. I was pretty ill there. Over the holiday season. <laughs> Don't ever underestimate your olfactory and taste system. All the pleasure of my life was gone. I'm glad to be back to food again. We'll see you for the next episode. Come on, let's do it. Dry January just sprung a leak. Sunday morning. I'm about to publish episode 159 here. And I always, after I export the video, I always watch it through once, maybe twice. Final check, right? Any last minute alterations, so I'm walking, I'm watching through and I'm cracking up. And I had to come on for a little epilogue. Uh, I couldn't let it slide. Because I'm watching myself get progressively more shit-faced as the episode goes on. So allow me to explain, please.
full disclosure, as always. Not that I need to explain. I can come home on a Friday night and catch a buzz, right? However, this one's funny. Because the last clip, when I say cheers with the champagne, is actually the opening of the show. I did that in the beginning. But by the time you see me going, we'll see you for the next episode. You know. <laughs> I was half a bottle of the champagne in. I bought that Blanc de Blanc for New Year's Eve. Figured, I don't know if I'm, a, I generally don't make it to midnight. But I figured, you know, I like to pop a little bubbly. Uh, I couldn't taste. I'm like, I'm not wasting this bottle of uh, bubbly if I can't taste it. So I put it away. It was in the fridge. I have been doing dry January. And so I shot that, what, on the 12th? So, you know, two weeks in, just about. The tolerance is down a little. By the second glass of that bubbly, not to mention the carbonation, I already, I already felt it. But the show must go on. <laughs> so that's the explanation for that. So now it is Sunday. I'm making carbonara tonight. If you saw the show, remember, I didn't have the Pecorino Romano. I got some new guanciale from that new deli in Kingston. And uh, bucatini a la carbonara tonight. So I have a beautiful uh, Italian vino rosso. And then it's back to dry jan. Until next weekend, when the man myth nephew gets married in Miami. All right. We'll see you, actually, for the next episode.